Laura's 30-pound carp was cruising the edge of a navigation channel. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. The water in the channel was 12 to 14 feet in depth, spanning approximately 40 feet across. The edges of the channel consisted of boulders that were placed to act as a retaining wall to prevent the structure from failing. Sean set up his rods on a point, allowing him to strategically place his baits in various locations along the channel. Carp were relating to this area, treating it somewhat like a submerged highway as they cruised up and down, vacuuming up the free offerings of maize, boilies and trout pellets. The strike zone was a 100-foot stretch of channel. Using the red marker as a reference point, Sean cast to the following areas. Rod 1 to the far side of the channel, Rod 2 in the center, and Rod 3 was cast to the inside edge of the channel. This strategy allowed the entire span of the carp highway to be covered. Laura's fish inhaled a tutti frutti flavored boilie, fished on a 10 inch hair rig below a 2 ounce method feeder. Ground baiting is key to keep the carp feeding in an area. Trevor headed out in his boat early that morning and threw out a good quantity of bait. It wasn't long before the carp moved in and began to feed. In addition to ground baiting, Sean used his catapult throughout the day to fire out particle baits, such as boilies and canned corn. As you catch fish throughout the day, throw out additional offerings. If the fishing slows down, try dipping your particle baits in flavorings. It can really pay off. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. Oh, there he goes. As far as baits today, we're using boilies. They're actually freshly made and ordered from the States. Tutti Frutti has been by far the most productive today. Uh, we're fishing those on a hair rig, about uh, 10, 10 inches in length. Going to need a bait needle to get those onto your hair rig. Right below a method feeder, which we're putting on a method feeder mix. As far as uh, rods go, we're using 12 foot, 2.5 pound test curve rods. We've got a large bait runner reel here, spooled up with 30 pound test braid. Uh, very important to have the bait runner, especially when you're fishing in the rod pod that we're using. And uh, you can see that these fish have a lot of power here. You need that bait runner system so that when you, when you leave the rods unattended in the uh, rod pod, it's not going to pull it right out into the lake for you. The rod pod we're using is a European style pod. It's got fully adjustable legs. We're using three electronic digital bite alarms. They've got a volume control and a tone control on there so that you can set the tones differently to identify which rod's going off. We're also using swingers behind those. What they allow us to do is if the fish comes towards us, the swinger will drop. If the fish swims away from us, then the swinger will come upwards. You always want to make sure you've got a wasteling with you, a good scale, and uh, a good landing net like the one we're using here. You're going to want to make sure you've got a good pair of forceps with you to get the hooks out. An unhooking mat is uh, key if you're fishing in uh, places where there's rock and stone like we are today. That's another nice one. Wow, we've got to weigh that. Tree baiting is the key to the success of landing these fish. You've got to keep these fish feeding in the area. Uh, we've been using maize, uh, high protein trout pellets. And what that'll do is it'll set up a sort of a field along the, like a grazing field almost for the carp out in the channel here. Make sure you've got a good bait catapult. Shoot a few boilies out around your hook baits like we did out by the market here. They'll come in and start feeding on the boilies and eventually pick up your hook bait. And then you're going to hook into a beauty like this. Kawatha carp. Eh? Yeah, Who the fuck is